This video is brought to you by Squarespace. In this video, we are going to be talking about Leica. This is my M10P with the 50 millimeter Sumilux f1.4 lens. I absolutely love this setup. This is a setup that I've been using for all of my personal work pretty much for the last year or so, and I haven't really talked about it much on this channel. So I wanna do that in this video today. Before we get into all this, I wanna preface it by saying one thing. So this is something I've said before in these videos, and I'm very serious about it. These are tools. They're very nice tools, but what tools do is they allow us as photographers to facilitate our artistic vision, which is something we spend our entire careers trying to build. They don't necessarily make you a better photographer. In fact, when I first started out, I had no money and I really wanted a Leica system really bad. All of my favorite photographers were all Leica shooters. People like Ralph Gibson, Henri Cartier-Bresson, Marc Rabot, Ernst Haas, I mean, you name them, they were all shooting Leica M cameras and that's really what I wanted to be shooting on. I couldn't afford it though. And so I would shoot on things like Holgas, I would shoot on like old vintage film cameras. Closest I could get to a Leica was shooting on old feds, the Russian fe uh, Leica copies. And that was about the best I could do. And what's funny is looking back at that period now, I look at the work that I did pretty early on. And I'm actually really proud of some of it because I had to try really hard. And as a result, with working on such awful gear all the time is I actually learned photography. And that's something that I recommend to anybody. And what's really cool is that when you create something that you're kind of proud of and that you're very happy with and you realize that you did it on very lo-fi equipment, it makes you really proud as a photographer to know that you understand that, and that is the difference. Okay, rant out of the way. I wanna talk about how I came around to Leica finally. So this was in 2020, it was last year, and that was a tough year, obviously, for everybody. I was feeling very creatively burnt out. A lot of it had to do with what I was doing with this YouTube channel, and you guys know how many cameras came out last year. And when you're covering releases of cameras one after the other, you have a very short amount of time after receiving the camera to, to learn how to use it, go out and get test shots, develop an opinion about it and have that video ready to go. And it becomes a rat race after a while when we go through periods where this much stuff is being released. So I was really burnt out. I felt like I wasn't creating images for myself anymore, that photography was just testing things. And it kind of became a drag. And I remember venting this to a friend of mine and he suggested, he said, why don't you just like, like find a camera that you are not used to shooting on and don't do anything for YouTube, just don't say anything about it and just, just explore going out and shooting for you. And I thought, well, that's a cool idea, but I kind of didn't do anything with it at the time. Well, last year during the pandemic, I had my opportunity to start studying with Ralph Gibson, which was a huge life changer for me. And at one point, uh, probably a couple lessons in, Ralph told me, he said, the, what I want you to be doing is you need to be shooting only on a 50 millimeter lens and on a rangefinder camera. You need to simplify everything. That's how it's going to go. And so I thought, okay, well, you know what? Come back to that Leica thing. I'd always wanted to be a rangefinder guy. And I thought, well, it's a lot of money, but here's the deal. I can look for things used. And I thought, okay, this is going to be time. Before I do any of this, I want to make sure that shooting on a rangefinder is what I want to be doing because it is very different than a mirrorless camera or a DSLR where you have full preview going on all the time and autofocus and things like that. So I rented a Leica. I rented an M10P actually and a 50 millimeter lens, this exact setup. And within about two days, it just snapped and I understood it. And I was no longer afraid to uh, use this in situations where I wasn't confident I was gonna be able to get into focus. And if you've never used a rangefinder system, it works very different than an SLR. And just for those who don't know, I wanna show you real quick. When you look through the viewfinder, you're not looking through the lens at all. You're looking through a secondary simplified optic. You have frame lines that show you where your composition's going to be. And in the very middle of the frame, you're going to see a secondary light source project an image overlay and as you focus this overlay is going to change and when you line that up with something you want to be focused on you know that that's in focus and you have to trust the camera you trust the lens because you're not getting a live preview there is a live mode on here but when you're shooting on the rangefinder that's how it is like I said this is not for everybody but I realized very quickly that this indeed was for me so I put together a budget I was very patient I ended up getting this setup used and I couldn't be happier I've been shooting with this for a year now couple situations that I typically wouldn't have thought I would ever use this in. I, we have a jazz club locally that I've been going to lately. It's a complete torture test, as my friend Steve Huff likes to call it, because you go in there and there's exactly two lights on the stage. It's very dark. This camera does so well. The processor in here is incredible, and you get very usable images all the way up to, it comes out to 12,800 ISO on this camera, and I'm really blown away with what I'm able to do. The other thing that I love about the M cameras is that they are so simplified. There's very little going on with this camera. I did a video years ago 
where I was complaining about digital cameras being overcomplicated. And at that time, my favorite camera in the world, and it still is a lot to this day, the Nikon F3. It's so simple to use. It's pretty much just an aperture priority setup and you don't have to think about things. You just go out and you work on getting the actual image and working in the moment. And at that time, I never saw that in any digital cameras that were current. Well, guess what? This is that and you have a few more options on it. So there's a lot to love in the simplicity of this design. But for me, the importance of a rangefinder comes down to two very specific things. The first one is going to be this manual focus idea. So when you raise this camera to your eye and you start to compose something, you're going to have to decide where your focus point is going to be, especially when you're using really wide aperture lenses. I remember the first couple weeks that I was getting used to a rangefinder, I would miss quite often. I'd get something in focus, but I would realize that that's not really where I wanted the focal point of my composition to be. So that's one thing that you start to see and you start to get better at because things happen fast and you're manually focusing, you're going to have to get it pretty quick. The second thing for me that is a big deal breaker is having those rangefinder lines in the secondary viewfinder. It allows me to see what is going to be included in my composition and it also allows me to see what is happening outside of that. Because when I'm composing, I'm thinking in compositional terms of geometry, symmetry, shape, line, all those things. And so when you think you've got it and you're kind of trying to frame it up and get it real specific and tight, it helps to be able to see what's in the composition and what you're leaving out because it tells me really quickly if I need to step back a few steps or I need to really get in tighter because something's distracting within the image. And that is such a big deal. You don't have that on any type of SLR camera or even mirrorless cameras that are essentially live view. It just doesn't work that way. They're going to give you all the pixels you're using, not give you a crop. The only exception to this would be what Fujifilm have done with the X-Pro cameras as well as the X100 cameras. And you don't have the focus rangefinder the same way, but there is a mode where you can actually view the frame lines like that. I don't think it's as effective as the Leica because it's a smaller box that you're looking through, but that's the only thing that comes close. And those two things for me, the manual focus and then being able to compose that way, make the rangefinder kind of just, for me, it's, it's the perfect system. Now I should also say the M series cameras are not the only line that Leica makes. There's actually five different models that they keep up with. There's the S line, which is their medium format, the SL, which is their mirrorless camera full frame. They have the APS-C, TL, and CL cameras. They also have the M series that we've been talking about. And then the newer Leica Qs, which is kind of their compact fixed lens. And this is a camera that I like a lot. And then we have this. This is the Leica SL2S, which is the latest in their mirrorless lineup. This is a camera that I've had for about 72 hours now is when it got here. And I haven't had a whole lot of time with this other than to get it set up. But I do want to give you a couple first impressions on this and talk about the SL system in general. Real quick though, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at squarespace.com. I am actually redesigning my personal website right now and I'm going to be using Squarespace. So I've been sharing a lot of images with you guys in these videos. This is something that I want to share more of, be able to put links and things to when I have collections made. Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. It really is the easiest way to build a website. You can build an online portfolio. You can even build an e-commerce store on here. The tools have really gotten good. How easy is Squarespace to use? Well, you're going to start with one of their award-winning templates. Now, all of these templates are customizable. Your content is separate from the template, so you can change the entire look. If you feel like you need a complete refresh or you're not sure on something, you can get things to look exactly like you want them. What good is a website if nobody's looking at it? Will Squarespace have the right social tools and email integrations in here so you can do your own website promotion as well? My favorite part of Squarespace, well, it's really intuitive. So if you can drag and drop a folder of images, you can build a photo gallery. It's that easy. You can easily go into the settings to customize everything to your liking, hook it up to your own domain. In fact, they sell those too, and you are in business. So head over to Squarespace using the link below this video, and you can try it out for absolutely free. And when you do decide that Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your first order by using offer code AOP. So once again, offer code AOP, and I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So the Leica SL line is essentially their take on mirrorless cameras. And if you remember back in 2019, when pretty much the world decided that Sony had proven that everybody had to have a mirrorless camera. And so we saw a numerous amount of announcements that year. So we had Nikon with the Z mount, we had Canon with the RF mount. Well, Leica announced a partnership with Panasonic and with Sigma, and they would all be part of what they would call the L mount alliance. And so essentially the L mount was taken from the original SL camera. And I think this is a incredible move 
move because it gives you as a photographer more options. This is very similar to what we saw with Micro Four Thirds years ago, where we have a mount that is not proprietary necessarily, and you can buy and mix and match systems, and that's the idea behind it. And it's going to give you more flexibility and more options as a photographer. One of the obvious downsides to this camera is going to be that autofocus system. So we're talking contrast-based detection only. There is no face detection in these, so it's not going to be a mirrorless in the sense of what Sony does with mirrorless cameras or what even with Canon does with their autofocus system. I mean, those are the two gold standards. They're two of the best. That is not what these cameras are going to be about, at least at this point, because the technology just is what it is. Right now, I have an M lens mounted to this, so you can get an adapter. And the cool thing about this is the Leica adapter allows you to see the EXIF data from the lens, so it automatically knows what the corrections need to be in camera, and it puts that EXIF data into the RAW file if you like to catalog or sort by lens, which is super cool. But for me, in approaching how I want to review this camera and how I want to use it, it's going to come down to essentially two things. First of all, this is a new BSI or backside illuminated sensor that Leica are using. I'm really impressed with the sensor that's in the M10 cameras. I think it's one of the best. The M10 monochrome has an incredible sensor in it, as does the M10R. And so it'll be interesting to see how this fits in with that lineup. Theoretically, it should be even better in low light, even though I think that they're very, all very usable in low light. I don't think that's a big problem to solve. But in terms of image quality, I'm still planning on going the manual focus route. I may look at autofocus, but that's image quality is what it's going to come down for me and the compatibility with these lenses. The second thing for me is going to be video. So it's become clear that Leica are putting a big emphasis on video. So with the SL2, which has a bigger sensor and fewer video options, the SL2S has more video options and obviously a smaller sensor where you're going to get a direct readout and a better picture in the end. Now, I'm not expecting this to be a Sony A7S III or even an FX3 that I'm using to film this video on now. Those cameras I love. I think they do video particularly well, especially for my purposes here. When, big winner for me is autofocus. So I'm not going in with that expectation on this. But I do remember using video on the original SL and I really loved the L log profile that came on there. Now that wasn't a really great video camera. It had some issues, but you could see an enormous amount of potential there. And so just in playing a little bit with this camera yesterday, so far, I'm really impressed with that log profile and what the image quality is coming out of this. So it's a little bit different direction than what I want to see with a Sony camera. But again, the expectations, I'm not expecting the blazing autofocus out of this right out of the gate. I'm looking at image quality. And I can tell you one thing that I'm really impressed with so far. Again, we were talking about that European design aesthetic and that direction towards simplicity and form and function, and that's what this camera is all about. You have very simple controls on here. Everything is customizable and mappable pretty much to whatever you want it to be. The menu system is dead simple. You can go through here without getting lost in submenus. Everything makes sense. It's all very practically minded, and within the 72 hours I've been using this camera already, I'm very impressed with that. I just love the setup. I love the approach, and I love the simplicity. I don't like to go spend an hour trying to figure out where something is in a menu and have it move on another camera model. Like everything's just so intuitive in here and just well placed and well done. One other thing that, well, let's go ahead in this video. I know I'm going to be repeatedly asking Leica to do that really fascinates me. So if you look at the M10 series and with the way they do variations on camera. So we had the M10, the M10P, M10R was the high resolution version. And then there's the M10 monochrome, which is the black and white version. So it's just got no color filter on the sensor. It just outputs in black and white. I did a whole video on this. I'm a huge proponent of that. They also did this with the Q series. So if you look at the Leica Q2, there's a monochrome edition. And I'm going to say here, let's just say for the sake of argument that this camera and the way it approaches video and the way that log profile works and how incredible it is, what if there were a monochrome version of the SL2? So let's say the SL2M. How many videographers out there, people doing video production, do you think would jump on that? I know I would. When I think about what I can do with a log profile and then thinking about what we could do with a high sensitivity version of not having the Bayer filter in there and a true black and white video camera, that's some possibilities that start opening right there. Anyway, I would love to know what you guys think. If there's anything you'd love for me to carry over into this review and talk about, let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.